Every time I fly into Kansas City to give a speech, there's a problem. A few years ago, I flew in to speak at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, to give a speech titled, Men Are Not Women. And some wacko in the audience attacked me. And the following day, the chancellor of the university sent out an email to the entire school apologizing. Not to me for being attacked, but to everyone else for the fact that I had been invited in the first place. Well, it's deja vu all over again. This Thursday, I am scheduled to fly into Kansas City to give another speech, this time at Washburn University in Topeka. The student group that invited me wants me to speak on the very same topic. This confusion between men and women and what the difference is, it seems to have only gotten worse in recent years. As Judge Ketanji Jackson proved last week, during her Supreme Court nomination, or her confirmation hearings rather, when she could not define the word woman. Yet again, the university leadership has sent out an email condemning me for a speech I have not yet given for making the bold and controversial claim that boys and girls are different. I received an anonymous tip last night that has since been confirmed that the president of the university, Jerry Farley sent out a campus-wide email preemptively condemning me for the speech that I have yet to give. This president, Jerry Farley, I've just confirmed with Young America's Foundation, personally signed the contract inviting me to speak. He personally signed a physical contract on March 8th saying, Michael, please come visit Washburn University and give your talk. And now, before I even give the speech, this man is condemning me as the worst person in the world. Here's what he had to say to the Washburn University community. A Washburn student organization has invited a speaker to campus who has a history of inciting fear and distrust. While I am strongly in support of First Amendment rights, I am disappointed when those rights are used to make others feel unwelcome and even unsafe in our community. While we support the right to speak freely, Washburn University does not condone the hate and misinformation spread by the speaker and his supporters. I'm going to pause right there. Those are some pretty bold claims that this man is making about me. Inciting fear and distrust making others feel unsafe, spreading hate and misinformation. What evidence does he cite for for these defamatory claims? Nothing, of course. No evidence exists. It's just not true. I haven't done any of those things. He is libeling and defaming me, a speaker who he personally invited to his campus. When he signed that contract, that was a personal invitation. He is endorsing the student group's invitation. He is, he is defaming me in the most vicious language he can based on absolutely nothing. He goes on. Thursday also happens to be International Trans Visibility Day. Washburn University supports the trans community and students who identify as LGBTQ+. Uh, side note, apparently now we're capitalizing the T in trans. I don't know when that happened. That's the new thing. So just to let you know where the rules are. Trans Visibility Day, by some happy coincidence or providence, perhaps. He goes on. We support and stand in solidarity with trans people around the world and encourage you to learn more about the issues affecting students, faculty, and staff who identify as LGBTQ+. We will continue to engage our resources to influence the campus community to be an inclusive place where all feel they are protected, affirmed, and valued an inclusive place where everyone is affirmed and valued, except for that hate-mongering monster, Michael Knowles, that devil himself who has the gall to say that boys aren't girls at a university, except for the students who invited that horrible monster and the faculty and every sensible person in the history of the world, all of whom know that men and women are different all of whom said so until five minutes ago when our leaders decided we were not allowed to state basic truths anymore. He concludes, I encourage you to celebrate the day with messages of compassion and support. With your help, this university can be a shining light and example to the greater community. We will learn together and from each other 
and we will be better people for the effort. Jerry Farley, president. I hope we will learn together. I hope the excitable leftists at Washburn University, President Farley foremost among them, will be able to learn from my speech on Thursday about how boys and girls are different. Probably should have learned that a little bit earlier than college. Probably should have learned that a little bit earlier than becoming the president of a college. But I hope they learn basic truths about human nature. And if that's too much for them, I hope at the very least they learn that conservatives are not going to be bullied and silenced and forced to kowtow to their ridiculous ideological fantasies. I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment yesterday is from Kenny Newdorf, who says, I like how people talk about really accepting who you are while they are taking medications to change everything about themselves. Well, this is just the point, isn't it? We're told you have to accept who you really, really are deep, deep down. And to who you really, really are, according to this destructive ideology, has absolutely nothing to do with the person that you are in reality. It's just, it, who you really, really are is, according to these people, what you are in secret. It has nothing to do with the physical world, has nothing to do with what we can see and touch and feel. And No, it has nothing to do with that. It's something completely different. And so accepting who you are means mutilating your body, taking all sorts of drugs, and trying to deny who you really are. Not a great idea. You want to be, in this life, you want to be the best version of yourself, who you really, truly are. Not some fantasy, but who you really, truly are. You want your car and your truck to be the best version of themselves, which is why you've got to check out rockauto.com. Right now, go to rockauto.com and write Knowles, K-N-O-W-L-E-S, in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that I sent you. rockauto.com is going to save you money. It's going to save you time. It's going to help you to uh, improve your car, improve your truck, to do the things that you've got to do to get around, to live your life, and you're not going to have to stand and wait at the brick and mortar store where you drive, you wait in line, you get peppered with a thousand questions. They don't have the part because there's just too many parts to stock these days. Then you got to go back. You got to wait two weeks. Don't do it. Rockauto.com, same reliably low prices for pros and do-it-yourselfers. You could save 20%, 30%, 50% on the parts that you need. The website's so easy to navigate. Even I can do it. They're a great family company serving auto parts customers online for 20 years. Great supporters of this show, which we really appreciate. Head on over to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck, and then write Knowles, K-N-O-W-L-E-S, in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. The transgenderism issue is such a big national debate, not because the majority of people are confused about the difference between men and women. They're not. The vast majority of people are extremely clear on the difference between boys and girls. It it reminds me of that meme, the IQ bell curve meme, where you've got the really dumb person all the way at the bottom of the bell curve, and he says, you know, men and women are different. And then you go all the way to the top of that bell curve at the IQ, I don't know, about 110 IQ, 120 IQ. So you've got some genius guy who says, actually, men and women are exactly the same. And actually, men can become women. And actually, it has nothing to, and I can't define what a woman is. I'm not a biologist. And all these kind of, and then you get all the way to the top of the IQ bell curve. And you get the super duper genius Jedi. And he says, actually, men and women are different. uh, Roger Scruton, the late conservative philosopher, he said, the job of the conservative intellectual is to articulate the things that the common people know to be true intuitively. (laughs) That's the job. And it's only those people in the middle who seem to get very, very confused about this sort of thing. The vast majority of people know that this ideology that is now pumping little kids full of cross-sex hormones, that is mutilating people's perfectly healthy organs, they know that the ideology is wrong, it's based on fantasy, and it's extremely destructive. So then why are we still talking about it? Why does this ideology keep getting pushed? Because it is an elite issue. The elites in government, in academia, in corporate America, the elites are disproportionately pushing this issue. I'm I'm not sure that there's any study on this, so I'm not studying statistics. I'm just speaking anecdotally. In my experience, 
the people who identify as transgender disproportionately come from the elite classes, come from very wealthy people with with fathers and mothers usually who are working at very elite jobs. That tends to be where this kind of sexual confusion lies in my experience. And this was just uh, bolstered. This thesis was just bolstered by a CEO or the the, uh, corporate president rather at Disney. Uh, Christopher Rufo, who's done a great job exposing critical race theory in schools, he's over at the Manhattan Institute. Chris Rufo has just come upon some private footage of an all-hands call at Disney, a video call, where the Disney corporate president described her multiple trans and pansexual children and called for more LGBTQ leads in Disney movies. I'm here as a mother of of two queer children, actually, Um, uh, one transgender child um, um, and one pansexual child, um, and and also as a leader. Um, And that was the thing that really got me because I have heard so much from so many of my colleagues over the course of the last couple of weeks um, in open forums and through emails and phone conversations and Um, I feel a responsibility to speak, um, not just for myself, but for them, Uh, to all of us. We we had had an open forum last week at 20th where, um, again, the home of of really incredible groundbreaking LGBTQIA stories over the years where um, one of our execs stood up and said, you know, we only have a handful of queer leads in our content. And I went, what? I, that can't be true. And I and I and I realized, oh, it, it actually is true. We have many, many, many LGBTQIA characters in our stories, and 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 yet we don't have enough leads. An issue, a sexual and ideological issue that affects an extraordinarily small percentage of the population that is represented in an extraordinary large proportion of the media and in the classrooms and in the corporate boardrooms. The problem we are told is that it's not represented enough. Trans visibility day. We we need trans visibility day. The issue is visible, folks. The issue is visible. The elites in every sphere of our society are pushing it. They're shouting it from the rooftops. Now, speaking of shout, I would strongly recommend you check out Shout Out. Have you ever wanted to send your conservative uncle a birthday greeting from one of his favorite conservative celebrities? Have you ever wanted to send your liberal cousin a birthday greeting from one of her least favorite conservative celebrities? Have you you ever wanted to do that? Well, there's only one place to do it, and that would be Shout Out. That is the Shout Out app. The most popular personalities on the right are all there. They're ready to make someone's day with a personalized video. How do you do it? You download Shout Out now on the App Store, or Google Play, and you will get 20% off your first customized shout-out video from the likes of, oh, I don't know, Steven Crowder. Ever you hear, ever hear about that guy? The Hodge Twins, J.P. Sears, Jason Whitlock, or Alex Jones. I want one from Alex Jones. Michael, happy birthday. Don't drink the water. I know, I'm starting to believe that about the water. Right now, head on over to Shoutout. Download the app from the Apple App Store from Google Play. Get it and make your conservative uncle's day or ruin your liberal cousin's day. Shout out on the app store. The corporate president of Disney says that it's very important that we have not just more LGBT LMNOP characters in our movies, there are already a lot, but we need more LGBT LMNOP leads. There are actually already a lot, but we need more. And she says this because she's the parent, she's the mother of a, a transsexual child and a pansexual child. Now, she's not. She is not the mother of a, a transsexual and a pansexual. She, I'm sure, is the mother of these two children. And I have no doubt that these children are confused. I don't, I don't doubt her that they have sexual confusion. But she is not the mother of a transsexual and a pansexual because those are not real categories of being. I'm not denying anybody's existence. I'm not saying that anyone is invisible to use the language that is so popular these days on the left. But the people that we're talking about here are not transsexual or pansexual is the newest. I don't know what, I think 
pansexual is just a high class version of bisexual. I don't exactly know what, what even the meaning, the purported meaning of pansexual is, but whatever it is, these people are not that because it's not a real category of being because a man cannot secretly be a woman. It's just not possible. Lump that one away with Bigfoot and the boogeyman. It's not real. The confusion that these people have may be real. A psychological problem that they have might be real or a social problem, which it seems to be the case as these minor, minor, relatively small issues in terms of the population have now exploded to a huge proportion of Gen Z in particular. So it might be the social problem might be real. The confusion might be real, but the actual condition is not because it's, it is not possible. I, 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 I repeat it because we seem to be so confused. It is not possible for a man to secretly be a woman or for a man to become a woman or for a man to change his, it is not, sometimes the left will tell you, well, Michael, sex and gender are different. Sex is not gender. And they say that, and they have a lot of confidence when they say that, but it doesn't mean anything. It's not true. They, they simply declare it, but they don't provide any evidence for that. What they seem to be insinuating is that sex is physical and gender is metaphysical. But then you have to probe that question further. You say, okay, well, where is gender? Gender is not in the brain, it's not in the body, it's not in the genitals, it's not in the chromosomes. So what is gender? It's non-physical. Okay, it would seem that you're talking about the soul, right? You're talking about the human soul. And very often at that point, they'll say, no, absolutely not, the soul is not real. We're just talking, I'm talking about the brain. Okay, well, if you're talking about the brain, then you're saying it's physical. So now you're saying that sex and gender are physical, and yet your, your physicality can be both male, entirely male, and entirely female. That's not possible. That violates the law of non-contradiction. We've known that since old Uncle Aristotle. Well, even if they go and say, okay, gender is non-physical, let's say they'll, they'll say that uh, gender is socially constructed. Okay, if it's socially constructed, then reconstruct it. If it's causing you this great deal of suffering, and one of them is immutable, your body, your physique, and then the other one is changeable, your, your socially constructed gender identity, then just reconstruct it. That's pretty easy. Problem solved. Why would you undergo painful, d- destructive surgeries and hormone therapies when you could just change the social construction? Well, no, because it's back in the body. Okay, then we're back to square one. It's an incoherent ideology that benefits absolutely no one and is driving society crazy because a bunch of elites can't work through their own personal problems and because a bunch of elites are enthralled to an extraordinarily stupid and destructive ideology. It's not just this woman. It's not just this lady who's, who, what are the odds, has two trans and pansexual children. The, the, the odds of having one, even according to the most generous statistics, are infinitesimally small. The odds of having two, maybe, maybe there's something more going on here. Either there is something in the water and Alex Jones is right, or maybe there's something more going on socially. Maybe there's something more going on within the family. Maybe there's something going on ideologically. A Disney production manager was also caught on this open call uh, d- claiming that we need more LGBT, LMNOP representation all over the place in Disney. I've had the privilege of working with the Moon Girl team for the last two years, and they've been really open to exploring queer stories. And part of, I'm on the production side, uh, part of uh, the work that I feel like I can put in is um, making sure that we take place in modern day New York. So making sure that that's like an accurate reflection of New York. So I put together like a tracker of our background characters to make sure that we have like the full breadth of expression. And uh, we got into a very similar conversation, Carrie, of like, oh, all of our like gender nonconforming characters are in the background. And so it's not just a numbers game um, of how many LGBTQ plus characters you have we got the further, uh, the, the more centered a story is on a character, the more nuanced you get to get into their story. And especially with like trans characters, you can't see if someone is trans. There's not one way to look trans. And so kind of the only way to have these like canonical trans characters, canonical asexual characters, canonical bisexual characters is to give them stories where they can like be their whole selves. Canonical transsexual care. Not, we don't just need the characters. We need canonical 
transsexual and canonical asexual characters where they can be themselves. That's the funniest part of all. That's the funniest part of all because the transgender ideology explicitly says, as that commenter made clear at the top, it explicitly says, don't be yourself. Be an imaginary version of yourself. Be a fantasy. Be the way that you would prefer that your, yourself to be rather than the way that you are in reality. It's the opposite of living authentically. It's the opposite of living your true life. Even asexuality, man is a sexual being. Sex is very important to human nature. As we all know, that's why we're debating sex so much in our politics. We need more of these characters. It, it made me think, Disney is just over. Disney is just completely over. I like Disney. I was never a crazy Disney kid. I never, I didn't watch the Disney channel. I wasn't gaga over the movies, but I liked them. In particular, I liked Pinocchio. I liked uh, The Lion King. I, I liked the movies. I watched them as a kid. I liked the older ones, Snow White. And those movies really were great. And I don't just want to sound like an old fuddy-duddy man saying everything's worse these days, but it is worse. If you're now taking really important aspects of human nature, the love between a man and a woman at, at the center of the sort of, of the human world, at the center of society, if you take that away, if you, if you deny sex and sexual reality, if you deny the things that motivate people, and instead you superimpose political correctness on top of it, which is a denial of reality. Ultimately, it's a denial of reality. Well, then the movies are not going to be as good, and we know that the movies aren't as good. I'm not saying Disney only makes total crap these days, but the movies that Disney is making today are worse than the movies that Disney made 30 years ago, and they're worse than the movies that Disney made 60 and 70 years ago. So we've still got the old movies, if you have them on DVD or something, good for you. Download them now. Save them. Because Disney is over. You can't, you can't, in good conscience, expose your kids to this crap. Not even because it's going to completely ruin their lives, although if they're peddling transgenderism, it, it won't help. But just because they're, they're just not good movies. They're not going to be edifying if the stories they're telling are contrary to human nature and contrary to to reality. And these are the lunatics who are running Disney now. These people who think that the most important thing to do in children's programming is peddle far left sexual ideologies. Before we close out Disney, we've got the executive producer, Latoya Raveneau, talking about how it's so important in Disney. One thing that she has really taken up is queering, queering, that's a verb, I guess, everything. Our leadership over there has been so welcoming to like my like not at all secret gay agenda and so like i i feel like i felt like it was i mean like maybe it was that way in the past but i guess like something must have happened in the last like like they are turning it around they're going hard and then all that like momentum that i felt like that sense of i don't have to be afraid to like let's have these two characters kiss let's in the background this are, like i was just Wherever I could, just basically adding queerness to, like, the, if you see anything queer in the show, I'm proud of them. But, like, I, I just was like, no one would stop me and no one was trying to stop. Everywhere. It's everywhere. Uh, the, the Senate candidate, Republican Senate candidate, Blake Masters, he tweeted out the other day in response to one of these crazy issues. He said, not everything has to be gay. We're not saying, we're not saying nothing, could, but not, not everything. <laughs> Not every single thing. Why is this even coming up? Because Florida passed a law saying that kindergarten teachers, kindergarten through third grade teachers, can't preach transgenderism and sex in the classroom. This should have been common sense. You shouldn't need a law for that. That should be so obvious. And in response, Disney, a children's entertainment company, said, no, that's too far. If we can't teach transgenderism to kids, if we can't queer everything, if we can't groom little kids, let's call it what it is, then we're going to fight back. We're going to fight back in Florida around the country. It is unconscionable to give your money to Disney at this point. We need to figure out an alternative. Kind of like sports. Sports used to be fun. They used to be an escape from the stress of everyday life. Now they're a stage for virtue signaling and political actors. Well, NBA star Jonathan Isaac is not having any of it. He faced heavy criticism because he's a normal, intelligent guy who had problems with some of the, the crazy vaccine push and disrespecting the American flag. And he's just a normal patriot, which is why I'm very excited to announce 
He's writing a book with us called Why I Stand. The book will be about the rise of his basketball career, his journey into faith, Christianity, his strength to stand alone in the face of immense pressure. The book is available for pre-order right now at Amazon. Reserve your copy today. We'll be right back with a lot more. Sex is not being discussed in kindergartens, and it's a good thing that it is. That's the line from the left. That's the line from the left in response to the parental rights and education bill in Florida and similar legislation that's being proposed elsewhere in the country. The same thing that they said about critical race theory. It's not happening. It's not being taught. And it's very important and good that it's being taught. So they're speaking out of both sides of their mouth. A kindergarten teacher, a male kindergarten teacher just went on MSNBC to lament the fact that he is no longer able to discuss his love life with his five-year-old students. It really hits hard um, in my heart professionally and uh, personally both. Uh, professionally, it, it truly makes me feel like um, I am not trusted as a professional. Um, I know my kindergarten standards through and through and um, nowhere in our curriculum does it have anything about um, teaching sexual orientation or sexual identity. Um, so for them to, to say that, that, that that's happening, um, that, you know, it's kind of crazy. Um, but uh, we should be able to have discussions and, and that's what we're encouraged to do in kindergarten. And then personally, because, um, you know, my, my kids do have questions. They want to know who the, uh, my partner is in pictures yeah. outside of my classroom. And I should be able to speak to that. That's what we do as educators. We build relationships with our kids. And in order to build relationships, you talk about your home life. You talk about what you do on the weekends. That's building community. I, it scares me to death that I am not going to be able to have these conversations with my children because they're going to ask me what I did on the weekend. I don't want to have to hide that my partner and I went paddle boarding this weekend. I don't know about you. I do not want this creep to have a relationship with his children, which are really my children, which is really our children, with his children. He says, look, he, he, he follows the exact liberal script. He says, this isn't happening. We are not teaching anything about sexuality in the classroom. And also it's terrible because I, I have to be able to teach sexuality in the classroom. We're not teaching it. It's not in the curriculum, but we are discussing it. The hell do you think teaching is? Teaching is when a teacher discusses something with students. That's what, that's teaching. And it's very important that m when my students ask me about my partner in the photos outside of my classroom, why are there photos of your boyfriend outside of the classroom? Why? That should not be happening. Well, they're, they're asking questions, right? You're, you're luring them to ask those questions when you post photos of your love life in the kindergarten classroom. And now... Now I won't even be able to talk about going paddle boarding with my boyfriend this weekend. Yeah, you're damn right you're not able to talk about that. What the hell is wrong with you? I do, usually don't get that hot under the collar. I'm a pretty chill guy. This is the creepiest thing I've heard in months. A kindergarten teacher begging, pleading on national television, even MSNBC, which nobody watches, but still national television, technically, pleading to be able to talk about his date nights with his boyfriends to five-year-olds whom he, he refers to as his children. The, if this man is this confused about the appropriate role and behavior of a kindergarten teacher, if this man is so unwilling to follow the law with regard to education in Florida, the man should be barred from the classroom, period. I'm glad he goes on TV. I'm glad that he is exposing the kind of creepy radicalism that we are seeing in the classroom. This is happening all over the place. It's not, I think we can now officially throw out the first line, the, t the first part of the story that we hear from the left. It's not happening. Critical race theory, it's not being taught. It's not being taught. It's only being taught in a few classrooms at Harvard Law School. And also, it's really important that we teach it in kindergarten. We can throw out that first part now. It's not just going on in Florida. Uh, yesterday, I talked about the Austin Independent School District, uh, in which a, a teacher was complaining because the gay pride parade at the, for the fourth grade students was, was not loud enough. It was not explicit enough. Well, we've got some video 
Thanks again to, I believe it was our friends at Libs at TikTok. It might, might have been Ian Miles Chong. I'm not, I'm not sure. I want to, I want to give appropriate credit. Uh, the, the pride parade that was going on at this Austin school was, uh, well, it was more than just waving some rainbow flags. So you've got, you got the flags. You've got this one woman, I think it's a woman, wearing a very, very short mini skirt. Actually, it's, no, it's less than a mini skirt. Multiple women wearing less than a mini skirt, lots of leather, dancing around with little kids with, what are they, eight or nine years old? Some look even younger than that. With these people, dre- like leather daddies, dressed up in skimpy little thongs with mini skirts covering it, ha- stiletto heels. These people, this is, sh- if, you, if you play this clip, if, you, if you're not watching this, if you're listening to this right now, I encourage you to go back later on once you, once you pull over, once you, you get back tonight. I encourage you, to, to look at this clip, to actually watch what's going on, because my description actually is not doing justice to how radical and creepy this is. And obviously the flags, the, the trans, there's a trans flag now, that's pink and blue, and then there's a pride progress flag. It's like the gay flag, but with a bunch of racial stuff in it as well. These people n- not only should not be in an elementary school, these people should be in a prison. You should not be able to put on obscene, sexually explicit dances for and with nine-year-olds without any consequences. By the way, all of this used to be illegal all over the country. (laughs) Actually, one of the uh, toughest cities for transgenderism, cross-dressing, that sort of thing, was, forget about the kids for a second, was actually San Francisco, which is now sort of the epicenter of this sexual radicalism. Does anybody believe, does anybody believe that this is normal or acceptable? Anyone who is not a complete radical leftist, I don't care if you're straight, I don't care if you're gay, I don't care even if you're confused about which sex you are, if you are in (laughs) any way, if you have any tether to reality, you cannot watch that video. You cannot listen to these radicals and say, that's normal. No, of course not. This is why the vast majority of Americans support the Florida bill. This is why over 60% of Americans support the Florida bill, despite all of the absolute misinformation coming out from every left-wing media outlet about it. You want to talk about that misinformation. Ron Perlman is the actor who played Hellboy and has been in some other things. Ron Perlman has been going on some unhinged Twitter rants in recent days. Ron Perlman uh, just uh, uh, gave a rant toward uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, reacting to the don't say gay bill. Good morning, Governor DeSantis. Ron here. Um, Don't say gay. Don't say as the first two words in a sentence spoken by a political leader of a state in the United States of America, don't say. Don't f- say, you f- Nazi pig. Say. First Amendment. Read about it. <laughs> then run for office. You piece of sh- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, read about it. Read about it. You got to read. You're not doing your reading. That's why you passed a bill that I was told by the media is called the don't say gay bill, even though I didn't read it. And I don't realize it doesn't say, don't say anything at all. <laughs> he is, this guy, no one has ever accused Ron Perlman of being the brightest bulb in the pack. But this guy is yelling at Ron DeSantis for something that he's never said. He's, he's yelling about a bill because of something the bill does not say. Then he gets really hot under the collar about it. I, I don't think that Ron Perlman is an outlier. Uh, Yes, he's a Hollywood guy. Yes, he's a little eccentric. I think that's what most liberals who oppose the don't say gay bill, I think that's what they're reacting about. I think they're reacting in basically exactly the same way as Ron Perlman. They are tilting at windmills. They're fighting against something. They're, They're knocking down straw men. They're fighting against something that is not 
real. Perlman just came out. He sent out another angry Twitter video at Senator Tom Cotton for his questioning of the Supreme Court judge, the, the nominee, Katanji Jackson. Tom Cotton. That can't really be your name, can it? What is that? Product your unpaid employees pick for you? For profit? You f- white slaver. Piece of shit. That line of questioning you pulled on that incredibly beautiful woman yesterday. Your staff is probably cowering as you read those statistics that they, under duress, put together for you, unless they're a bunch of white, white f- slavers too, which is probably the case. Who else would work for you, you piece of shit? Play back your line of questioning and tell me that wasn't the most racist thing I've seen since Jefferson f- Davis. F- you. Someone clearly received his Biden crack pipe delivery before the rest of us did. I keep waiting. I keep checking my mailbox. Where is my Biden crack pipe? And there, Ron Perlman got his and I, probably a few other people's before. That's the only way that I can explain this, except, except for this. It, what's his argument? His argument here is Republicans who criticize Katanji Jackson, the most radical Supreme Court nominee ever in the history of the country, they are racist. That's all he's saying. And he's got colorful language and he's saying it in kind of a stupid way, but that's the point. That's the thesis. Republicans, if they oppose this nominee, are racist. That's what every liberal believes, pretty much. (laughs) Maybe that's a little unfair. That's what every prominent liberal says. That's what the leading Democrats say. That's what the leading television commentators say. That's what the leading blue checkmark liberals are saying. That's what they're almost all saying. Republicans are opposing this woman because she's black, because they're racist, even beyond this woman. Republicans are racist. That's why they do what they do, is because they hate black people. That Republicans who who support the Florida education bill, they hate free speech, they're opposing the First Amendment. That's, he he sounds like a dummy, because we can hear him, and we can see him, but he's not saying anything different than any of the prominent liberals on either of those issues. How terrifying is that? We're living in a nation half full of Ron Perlman's. These are the main Democrat arguments and they're BS. They're BS. I mean, this is the sort of thing that you're hearing, not just from kooks on Twitter. You're hearing it from the president of the United States on a totally separate issue, but with the same degree of dishonesty. Joe Biden is now shifting his attention away from COVID. That's a loser for him. Away from foreign policy. That's a loser for him. Now he's finally got to address the economy. And, and he's making an argument that has been debunked time and time again. Namely, that billionaires are paying a lower tax rate than their secretaries. Under my plan, as I said, no one making less than $400,000 a year will pay additional single penny in taxes. No one. If you don't make four hundred grand, you are not going to pay a single penny in additional federal taxes. And the wealthy in corporations will finally begin to pay their fair share. For most Americans, The last few years were very hard, stretching them to the breaking point. But billionaires and large corporations got richer than ever. Right now, billionaires pay an average rate of 8% on their total income. 8%, that's the average they pay. Now, I'm a capitalist, but uh, just, if you can make a billion bucks, great. Just pay your fair share, pay a little bit. A firefighter and a teacher pay more than double, double, the tax rate that a billionaire pays. That's not right. That's not fair. I love the whisper thing. I love when you get the full gamut of Biden's emotions that he doesn't seem able to control. So you get the shouty Joe Biden. Come on, come on. You get, and then you get, you get the secret, vaguely sexual whispering Joe Biden. It's not fair. It's not fair, he says, that billionaires are paying a lower tax rate than teachers and firefighters and then their secretaries, except it's just not true. It's not true. Even PolitiFact, which is a left-wing fact-checking outlet, they refuse to give a formal declaration, true or false on this, because that would disadvantage Democrats in the algorithm on which news stories are allowed to pop up on social media. But they they sit on this claim that, that uh, billionaires pay a lower tax rate than their secretaries. They said, is it true? Generally, no. Generally speaking, it's not true. Of course not. Yes, the billionaires are paying the, the 
uh, capital gains tax rate for a lot of the money that they're getting. But first of all, that money's already been taxed at the corporate level, so let's not forget about that. And second of all, it's just not, when you look at the actual numbers, you break it down. In principle, it's not true, and then in practice, it's not true either. Joe Biden failing on the economy, failing on foreign policy, failing on crime, failing on immigration, failing on public health, failing on civil liberties, failing on, he's below, I'm, I'm speaking in objective terms. He's doing the wrong thing on all of those issues, but also in subjective terms, the voters don't like what he's doing. He's below in the polls on all of those issues. So what does he do now? Well, he just signed into law a bill that will finally outlaw lynching, which doesn't happen. It doesn't occur ever and is already illegal. It's already very, very illegal, but he's going to make it double un- illegal. It's going to be double, triple illegal. He, uh, Biden just signed the Emmett Till anti-lynching law. The last lynching in America took place 40 years ago, uh, but that, that was sort of a one-off. The last, the last uh, spate of lynchings hasn't really happened for, what, 70 years now? Uh, there's something, uh, you know, l- lynching was a problem from the late 19th century up until the early to mid 20th century. Even then, though, it's not like we're talking about tens of thousands of people being killed. I mean, it was, it was still thousands of people, but uh, it was a much uh, smaller problem than, the, the, I think the left would have you believe that this was hundreds of thousands of people were being killed. And it's not true. It was a, it was a problem. It was a big issue. Extrajudicial killings are always a problem, but it was dealt with. It was dealt with 70 years ago. And it's already against the law. By definition, it's against the law. It's extrajudicial. And then they beefed up legal protections and then it went away. And now Joe Biden is trying to solve a problem that was solved 70 years ago because he can't solve any of the problems that are going on today. And I say this as an Italian American. You know, the Italian Americans were the victims of the largest mass lynching in American history. All right, so I said, this is a, I'm, I'm speaking with all of the credibility and authority and ethos of identity politics that the left forces on us. I'm telling you, as a, as a son of Rome, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. And Joe Biden's only signing this thing so that he can get a victory for a problem that doesn't exist. Because there are a lot of problems that do exist, and he's making all of those worse. How did this guy become president? How? We're told he got the most votes ever for anyone ever in the history of voting. He's so, he's the most popular president ever, and yet he's below water on every issue. His approval rating's in the tank. The only thing he's got going for him is that while his approval rating's in the 30s, his administration is somehow even less popular. His vice president is much less popular, Kamala Harris. So how did it happen? Some people suggest there were shenanigans in the 2020 election. I, I've suggested that. In fact, we know that that's true. We know that in the 2020 election, there was outright illegality. We know that the way the election was conducted in Pennsylvania was not constitutional according to the state constitution. State constitution expressly prohibits widespread mail-in ballots. The state pushed it anyway. And so that's just one example. We know that there were irregularities, let's call them, in a lot of states. Well, now, right here on Real Clear Politics, there's a new uh, peer-reviewed research that finds evidence of 2020 voter fraud. The claim that's generally, there, there are three claims. One is no, no shenanigans at all. Yes, Democrats changed all the election rules in the weeks and months before the election. Yes, it took a long time to count the ballots. Yes, there were some anomalies, but no, it's the totally safest, best election ever. No one has any doubts about it. If you, if you doubt the results, then you're a crazy, kooky conspiracy theorist. Then there's the second group, which says, yes, Obviously, the election was rigged. They changed the rules. There were a lot of problems, but it wasn't enough to change the the results of the election. So Biden would have still won, but yeah, there were some shenanigans. Then there's the third group, which says, we're not so sure if Biden actually got the most votes in the right places to become president. He is the president now. He's been sworn in. He is is effectively the president, but maybe that election wasn't totally kosher. Well, this this new peer-reviewed research from John R. Lott who is the president of the Crime Prevention Research Center, and until January of 2021, was the senior advisor for research and statistics at the Department of Justice's Office of Legal Policy, where he dealt specifically with issues of voter fraud. He seems to think the election was a lot more rife with abuse than people are letting on. He points out,
the point of this is not to contest the 2020 election. I think it's probably silly to contest the 2020 election. It's, a, it's over. Joe Biden is the president. Maybe he won fair and square. Maybe he totally cheated. Maybe it was a stolen election. He is the president, though. There's no, there have been stolen elections in American history. That's how, that's how Lyndon Johnson became a senator and then became the president through a stolen election. So it, that happened. But the reason that it's important, I know a lot of Republicans just want to move on. They say, don't raise any questions about the irregularities in 2020. Don't even raise the prospect of cheating. Well, it's very important, not because of 2020. That's over. We're in it. We're in it. We're under the Biden administration. It's because of 2024. It's because if we do not have confidence in our elections, then the republic's going to crumble. Democrats don't have confidence in it. Republicans don't have confidence in it. There's evidence of a lot of rigging going on. And so we have to keep talking about that because of this basic political issue. It's why we keep talking about transgenderism, actually, in a certain way. Because if we can't agree on the definition of man and woman, it doesn't matter what our tax debates are going to be. It doesn't matter even what our, our debates over crime or immigration are going to be. We can't speak to each other. If we can't speak to each other, we can't have self-government. If we don't have faith in our most basic systems of politics and government, then all those second order political debates are not going to matter. The, the country is in a very tough spot. We need to get back to basics. Can we trust our votes? Can we trust our system of election? And perhaps more importantly than anything, do we even know what a man and a woman is anymore? I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. See you tomorrow. The Michael Knowles Show is produced by Ben Davies. Executive producer, Jeremy Boring. Supervising producer, Mathis Glover. Production manager, Pavel Vidovsky. Editor and associate producer, Danny D'Amico. Associate producer, Justine Turley. Audio mixer, Mike Coromina. And hair and makeup by Cherokee Hart. Michael Knowles Show is a Daily Wire production. Copyright Daily Wire 2022. On The Matt Wall Show, we talk about the things that matter, real issues that affect you, your family, our country, not just politics, but culture, faith, current events, all the fundamentals. If they matter to you, come check out the show.